I want to welcome you out um, to this community conversation. Um, what we're going to talk about tonight is the fire station. Um, it's been 50 years since Kingfisher has had a fire station built. Um, we're going to show you our progress we've made thus far. You can see um, to my left what the uh, fire station will look like, the layout of the building, uh, the size. Um, our current station now is about 7,500 square feet. Um, five guys sleep together in one room. Um, it's, it's really tight quarters. Uh, we can't store all of our equipment in that fire station. The, the community's grown over the last 50 years. And um, the mayor and the city council are unified in building a fire station. Um, I know many of you probably voted in 2021 for that half cent sales tax. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, the, the cost of construction, we brought our architects with us. Um, BRW has been in the business a long time. They built over 360 fire stations, so they're very much versed um, in the construction field and they've built a variety of stations. You're going to see some fire stations that, um, in my humble opinion, look like professional office buildings, but our fire station is right there, what we're looking at, and it looks like a fire station. But every community is different. Uh, Ray Holliday is, is here representing uh, BRW, and I'm going to turn the mic over to him. Um, he will make the first presentation, and then the fire chief and I have put one together, uh, some more bullet points that'll, that'll cover uh, what we're going to talk about tonight. But basically, it's a community conversation. We have the mayor and the full council with us, um, Commissioner Whitrock, Commissioner Mecklenburg, uh, Commissioner uh, Burpo, and Commissioner Taylor. So they're here to listen just as much as I am. Um, my goal is to put this uh, proposal out on the street in April of 2025 um, and uh, bid it and hopefully get it awarded in June of 2025 and start construction right away. And it'll take about 14 to 16 months to build. So it'll be sometime the end of 2026 um, when this uh, new fire station will be available uh, for the community. Um, I'm new to the community. I've been here 15 months and I'm still getting acquainted. So I really appreciate those of you that took time out. I appreciate my firefighters cooking some uh, firehouse chili. And uh, so I'm really hoping that we have a good conversation tonight. And for those of you attending, you're representing the entire community. And so that's a lot on your shoulders but we do want to hear from you. We'll have a mic that we can pass around uh, after we put this um, PowerPoint out there and you may have some questions um, and we'll try to address them. So with that, I'm going to turn some time over to Ray Holiday. Hey, thanks, Jim. Um, well, good evening, citizens of Kingfisher. Um, I'm, as Jim mentioned, I'm trying to get it, not block anyone here. Um, uh, I'm Ray with BRW Architects. We've been designing fire stations for about 24 years and we've, um, as Jim mentioned, we've done a little over about 360 stations and, and uh, currently we're working in six separate states right now. So we have a, a fairly good knowledge in fire stations and the function and the costs and so forth. And so the city of Kingfisher has been great to work with. The fire department's been excellent to work with. And so as we've been doing some preliminary design on the facility. Um, we've uh, come in some hurdles with, uh, with the cost and kind of want to go over that with you all tonight and kind of show you where we're at with the design in the, in, and uh, educate you a little bit on that and kind of show you a little bit, uh, some of the details and then kind of, uh, kind of where things have been going cost-wise the last four years since, um, uh, the uh, uh, pandemic and then see if I can answer any questions. So I guess there's a clicker somewhere. And so the image we have up here is kind of the image uh, you would see from the highway. Um, so um, <coughs> we, 
but um, we'll get into the details of it in a minute. Just want to tease you with it, and we'll kind of kind of return to this in just a minute. So we're going to talk about construction economy, kind of material costs, and then some of our our firm is BRW, so kind of show you some similar stations, and kind of in hopes of what this facility will look like. So. As you all know, um, we had COVID back in 2020, and things kind of froze, construction kind of slowed down, and uh, we all isolated and so forth. And then kind of coming out of uh, the pandemic, uh, spring of 21, summer and so forth, we started seeing uh, prices jump across the board. And going into 23, we saw a 40% increase in construction costs throughout the country. Uh, lead times for some of these items were dramatically increased, and that was kind of some of the costs for some of the, the prices going up. Um, and there was more work and, and less competition, so that kind of allowed for construction costs to be maybe higher than it should have been because the competition isn't there with everyone being so busy. So that said, we uh, have researched kind of the construction costs. This is a construction cost index, which is published every quarter, kind of nationally. And it starts in 2009. And the bar on the very left is the January of 09. And then each bar after that is kind of the December of 09, December 31st of each year going across there. So it uses January 09 as kind of the base, is kind of 100. And then from there it goes up and down. And so uh, if you recall, we kind of had the, the recession hit kind of fall of 08, kind of things kind of dipped in 09, and then things started climbing out in 2010, 2011. And you can see kind of a, a gentle rise in construction costs from there as it rose all the way into 2018, a little bit of a jump with the market and costs. And then we hit the pandemic in 2020, kind of levels off, and then in 21, uh, is when the, the whole construction and all costs, cars, automobiles, homes, all that kind of jumped. And uh, it hasn't come back down. It, it steadily increased in 21, 22. And then in 24, it hasn't leveled off, but it's, it's now more kind of normal trends of seeing a 3% a increase over the years, what's projected. These are the first two quarters. So it's about a percent and a half at the moment or percent and three quarters, I think I saw. So it is increasing, but it's not like what it was between 20 and 21 and 21, 22. So. so a little bit of why construction costs are a little bit more than what it was originally. In fire stations, like I said, we do a number of these. We do about 16 stations a year. And um, back in 2018, the average price we were seeing, it was about 389 a square foot. And then it was kind of creeping up to 403, 455, and then 21 jumped to 575 a square foot, and all the way to 667 a square foot in 2024. For this station, we're kind of forecasting about 580 a square foot, so a little bit below the average, but the range is about 475 a square foot to 750 a square foot, so we're kind of in the middle, kind of just slightly below middle. Again, the city and the fire department's been very, very responsible and very forthcoming in terms of their needs and not wanting anything out, out, out last, out, outlandish, uh, but they're wanting long, durable, low maintenance type of materials and to minimize maintenance on the building. And you'll see that here in just a minute. So material cost, just a few examples of things that have increased since the, the uh, dream of this facility here. Um, there's been a labor shortage in the construction industry, which is cost um, prices to go up in terms of wages and so forth, uh, timelines, things like that. The material costs, very volatile, fluctuations of material, do supply chains and so forth, uh, electrical panels, uh, generators, things like that. For a while there was a year wait on generators that's come down now to six months, but uh, for a while there, a lot of departments were, uh, had over a year wait just to get a generator. And then costs, Pressure is rising across various aspects of construction and affecting profitability. And so here's plumbing and mechanical. So this is kind of going back to 2008 as well. We're using that as kind of the, the starting point of like 100% and then kind of building up from there. 
and, and the red box kind of indicates 2020 to 2024. Again, significant jump in plumbing and electrical costs. Um, oh, again, a 40% increase there nationally across the board, and it's affecting uh, here in, in central Oklahoma. Concrete, cubic yard, this one's not quite as long duration. This is 21 to 23, so a three year period, but it's about a $40 increase in cubic yard just from 21 to 23. So again, this is kind of affecting what was hoped to be a little lesser cost per square foot per the building being a little bit more now being going into 2024. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the projects we've done here and kind of some of the similarities we see in your facility. Hi, my name is Ashton. I'm also with BRW. Um, so just some of our background that we've done. So like both Jim and Ray said, we've done about over 300 fire stations. Um, and so our favorite part is we get to customize these facilities for the community. So none of our fire stations are the same and we really like to dive in and research your community and really make um, a building that fits it. Um, so right now on the slide, we've got more of our commercial fire stations, so things that you would see um, kind of outside neighborhoods. And then we also kind of have more of our residential type looks. We've got a gable roof. Um, we play with different materials to really play in and fit the community. Um, so these are similar to the boards that are in the back as well. So we've got the site plan. So Main Street on the left, north is facing up. Um, the apparatus bay, the trucks would exit on the Main Street. Um, we have public parking on the north side and then the employee parking back behind on the east side. Um, so here we've got the floor plan. So we've got a lobby up in front and the training room really keep the public spaces together. Um, and then once you go through that lobby, you've got more of your office spaces. And then adjacent to the bay, you have more of your apparatus support. Um, kind of the trends that we've seen in fire stations is to create healthy stations. And so we have the apparatus bay, which is filled with carcinogens. And um, that's considered your hot zones. And then we like to have transition spaces. So to be able to dispose of those carcinogens before entering into the living to help the firefighters stay healthy. And then the second floor is more for the living of the firefighter. So you have your dorm rooms, um, your day room, your kitchen, and your dining area, um, as well as bathrooms, and then some support spaces such as mechanical and electrical. Uh, so like Ray said, this would be the uh, facade that faces Main Street. Um, so you've got your uh, main entry within the tower. We've got a plaza out in front, um, and then the visitor parking there on the left. And then just a side view, so you can start to see the second story a little bit more on this side with those offices on the first floor and the dorms on the second floor. And then um, I guess in this slide kind of show what we're kind of illustrating here is, is Ashton showed some images of what the building looks like. Um, that, that scheme is kind of what we call the, the better scheme or the preferred scheme. Um, the base scheme is kind of what, what we're budgeted for right now. And so the challenge is, is, is the department needs some, some elements that will help them in the long term and even short term that we can't seem to squeeze in the budget right now based on construction costs. So one is uh, what we call exhaust louvers. So in the truck bay, because as Ashton mentioned, there's diesel exhaust. We've got to exhaust that out, so we have exhaust fans. What's the trend right now, and most departments are going to, is what's called direct capture, where there's a hose that hooks up to the fire truck that keeps those diesel particulars from getting into the bay, tracking that into the, to the living quarters. Uh, uh, research recently in the past has shown that those particulars are highly um, uh, subjective to causing cancer and so forth. And so, Unfortunately, firefighters have almost a two to one chance of getting cancer than you and I do because of the hazardous materials and things that are around. And so the, 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 the focus is to kind of keep those out of the fire station and keep that into the, in the truck bay, if anything, but keep it out of the truck bay so they don't track it into the fire station. The next item is the generator. Um, 
it's about a $250,000 item, and with the, the budget we have, it's, it's hard to squeeze that in there, and so it's one of those things that we need to have, and, and we don't have that, that room to kind of get it in there. Some of the other elements um, is kind of just what we could, uh, the garage door and track. Uh, there's kind of there's a commercials track, which is more of a three inch track with heavy duty rollers. That's more commercial. These garage doors go up 10, 12 times a day and close and so forth. So it's a lot of wear and tear as opposed to would be more of a residential grade that um, will work, but will have some maintenance issues and, and replacing of parts and so forth. Same with the roof. Um, an asphalt shingle roof is about a third of the cost of a standing seam roof. That gets us in budget is where we're at right now. They like to have a standing seam metal roof, which is more long-term, a 50-year roof. Um, and so that's one of the things we're looking at. Um, the, this building right now currently has about 25% masonry on it. We like to have the whole building be masonry. Uh, the building right now is, is, has hardy siding with paint on it, so they'll have to do maintenance on it and so forth. Uh, the goal is to have it all masonry so that there's zero maintenance uh, for the years to come and, and more hardy and more durable. Um, same with some of the other features, uh, kind of lesser quality of windows right now, kind of more of a residential versus commercial. Um, firefighters a little bit more, um, uh, uh, trying to find a word, but uh, they can be a little bit destructive on a building when they're not trying to be. and so. Having things a little bit more, I never say firefighter proof because they'll destroy it in front of me, but firefighter resistant <laughs> in terms of materials and so forth so that uh, lasts for uh, 50 years as the current station has. And then um, just simple things like uh, pre-manufactured cabinetry versus more durable cabinetry being more solid wood so the hinges are, and the screws go into wood rather than MDF board which can, can strip out and so forth. And, and the list kind of goes down in terms of uh, plastic laminates versus solid surface or quartz countertops and, and um, alerting system, which they desperately need. So getting that in there so they're not using radios, they've got a speaker system that's kind of going throughout. And then using um, more heavy duty commercial lighting versus residential. So because of that, that's kind of, bur that's kind of pushing us into a cost more from, I think we're about 500 a square foot and getting closer to 580 square foot to get them kind of what they're, they're hoping for and what they're needing for the next 50 years. So, anything else, Jim? No. Ryan will set up for the next uh, PowerPoint. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of the drawings, like I said, are on my left. Um, you know, I shared with you right now, five guys are in one room, and then the captain has a <coughs> private uh, suite uh, in the fire station. Um, they got one bathroom for six guys on a shift. I've had four kids, and we've had more bathrooms than the fire department has. This proposed station will have four bathrooms, and it will have eight bedrooms. They're dorm rooms, they're not very big, um, but at least each firefighter will have his own room and then we've built in, depending on if Kingfisher continues to grow a little bit over the next few years, or we recruit a female firefighter. You know, um, I've, in my career, I've seen one or two fire, female firefighters hired. And so we haven't had that here, but you never know what's gonna come in the future. Those spare bedrooms that aren't going to be used will be used for storage until we need them. But at least we're planning for the future. I, like um, I truly want this yeah. building to last 50 years. I want yeah. some city manager 50 years from now to say, boy, they did the right thing in 2024, 2025, 2026. So did you get it up, Brian? Okay. Do I have a clicker? Are you going to click for me? Or? All right. Do I just push, which button do I push? <coughs> On the right. Right. This one? Okay. All right. So here's just a little more information. There's the site. Uh, we paid, somebody asked me, I was, spoke at the Lions. They asked me if the land had been paid for already. It has. It was about $650,000. The city used ARPRA um, funds to uh, purchase that. 
There again, there's the uh, building. Um, currently, it's about 9.1 million. Um, there is a contingency built in there uh, of about 10%, so that's about $900,000. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's our current price. That's without the upgrades that Mr. Holiday pointed out. Um, that's at about five hundred dollars a square foot. Um, this current, like I shared with you at the beginning, the current building is about seventy-five hundred square feet, and this is going to be sixteen five. So we're going to go twice the size and a little bit more. Um, but currently we store some of our uh, equipment in a, uh, a rented facility about a half a block from the fire station. Um, estimated interest, today's interest, if, if we wanted to borrow money, um, I've talked to a couple of people, I know we got a couple of bankers here, uh, we're looking at about 4.4% interest. And if you spread that out over about 15 years, uh, depending on how much we borrow, we're looking at about two and a half million dollars uh, in interest. I know the Fed's cut the Fed uh, the discount rate by half a percent. I'm hoping by the time we get this thing awarded, maybe it'll be down another half a percent or three quarters of a percent. But you never know uh, what the economy is going to do. I mean, economists are saying, you know, inflation's coming down, so they're willing to loosen up the the purse a little bit. But right now, we're looking at about four and a half or 4.4% on, on our interest. Uh, that's our architect fees uh, to design, uh, inspect the whole kit and caboodle to uh, put this together. Um, it takes about nine, 10 months to, uh, to do that. So here's, here you go, you got your land costs, you got your building costs, you got your interest on money, architect fees, we're about 12.9 million. Um, and that's if we go with a $500 a square foot building. What's that jump to if we go with the better scheme? Um, and we'll add $85, 85 times 16,500. Nine, nine and a half million is what it is. Yeah. At five, eight. Yeah, nine and a half million for the, yeah. for the building. Have yeah. You guys, have you guys considered? I know how a project like this is, your architect designs it and then you award it to some contractor. Yep. These contractors, they they build everything and I know it's a government entity. They build everything. It costs twice as much to build for a government entity as it does for a personal. But why can't you, with custom cabinets and some things, there's some things I've seen on there that is on the better scheme we got people here locally in the community that do those kind of things, like build custom cabinets and put in good countertops and stuff like that. We could probably save some money. Yeah. Is that a possibility? We, we talked about that as a committee, and, and Ray said, you know, that there were like some furniture if we wanted to buy a refrigerator and a dishwasher, and because um, each one of the, each shift, there's three shifts. And there'll be three pantries. Right now, we just have one refrigerator and one pantry. I mean, it's, it's just very inconvenient. And every shift, you know, everybody eats something different. So that's going to be in there. So there is some flexibility with that, that we, we could do some work or subcontract some of the work ourselves. So, yeah, that, that's on the table. So, Jim, the, the 580 would take the, the building cost from 9.1 to 9.6. Okay. So you just add, add about... Five hundred thousand dollars to the twelve point nine. Yeah. So you're looking at about a thirteen five. Thirteen five. That's not much for a significant increase in well, quality. The thing is, I was here, lived in town here when they built the present station. Yep. And I remember it was just a couple years down the road. They had all kinds of problems with that station. The roof leak, the doors broke, you name it. They was doing all kinds of repair. Thought, my God, yeah. Just long enough to get it out of warning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was all kinds of stuff that went wrong with it. If I remember right, Chief, is, is that roof flat? Do we have a flat roof, Tony? Yeah. yeah. Flat roof 
Yeah, so we have discouraged flat roofs. That's why this one's got so many pitches in it. And it's been an architect challenge, but uh, but Ray's group was up to it, so. Now then, now the question. Yes, sir. Are you designing this building to put all of the fire equipment that the fire? Yes, sir. All of it in there? Yes. What are you going to do at the old fire station? We haven't, we haven't crossed that road yet. I want to get this thing, you know, get it designed, and then we can start talking about what to let do. Me make a, let me make a suggestion there. Yep. Most of these communities, as they grow, all at once, hey, we need a, another fire station. They need more than one station. Why not use the old fire station to park some of the vehicles in that you get out maybe once a month to go drive mm -hmm. and the, the, back really, a little one bit. of the options is to keep the, the existing fire station right now as a substation later on down the road. Yeah. That's, that's definitely on the on the table. That, that needs to be. Yeah. We need so, to keep that thing. Yeah, and that's part of having this community conversation is just to get feedback from you guys. Um, we have not even contemplated what to do. Um, I know the Catholic Church has an interest, you know, in the property once we evacuate because, you know, it's right next to their church and their area, but we've had no discussions directly with the Catholic Church. Yes, sir. I think that they're fine that EPA is going to require that, that direct evacuation system. Uh -huh. to get those, uh, oh, the car carcinogens. That, yeah. 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 That's just a, a life safety thing. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. We've, we've got another microphone. Chief, will you run that down there to her so everybody can hear the question? <laughs> She's right over here. Pretty lady with the blonde hair next to the handsome fellow with the glass, uh, sunglasses on his head. I was just going to recommend that you repeat what the audience said, but now you've got a microphone. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, sir. Ryan over here on the... My question is, what are you going to do with the old fire station? Well, that was one of the questions that was raised. Sorry, yeah, that, that's... It sounds not great. Okay. We have made no decision on what to do with the old fire station. No idea whatsoever. None. None. We're, we're still, you know, like I said, it'll be the end of 2026. We're not even at the end of 2024. So we still have two years ahead of us um, to determine you know, what we're gonna do uh, with that fire station. So, but I will tell you, I've had, a, I had an internal study done by one of my employees and um, the city of Kingfisher owns about 177 pieces of property totaling over 800 acres. So we need to lighten our load a little bit. You know, I, I don't like being a landlord of that much property, but I realize some of it's golf courses and parks and those things. But um, as far as public owned property, we own over 800 acres. Tell them that might be a good way to make up some of this. What's your title? Yeah. Pardon? What's your title? Oh, I'm Jim, I'm Jim Thomas. I'm the city manager here. Oh, okay. Thank so, um, yeah. I got here uh, July of last year. Yeah. So. Yeah, I wonder, Jim, do you, do you have some, are you going to show the numbers of, of the taxes that we're getting now and where we're going to be? Oh, yes. Yeah, Let me continue. Yeah. Show the gap of where we're at. As I shared with you, uh, there's a contingency on the construction of about 10%. Uh, currently, we have about 2.2 million in savings. That, that tax has been brought in since when you passed that half a cent in 2021. That is restricted. Um, uh, the only thing we've paid out of that since we started collecting is uh, we've gotten a couple of architect uh, bills that, that has come out. So that's what we're holding right now in reserve. It's making about 5% interest. Um, so we've got it in some CDs. So we've got it working for us or working for you uh, to help us out. Uh, challenges we're facing with, with, with uh, funding since 20, 21 to 24 We've seen an increase of 25 to 40 percent increase in product and materials, and I think Ray outlined that uh, in some of his slides. Um, we do want to have a discussion about extending the dedicated sales tax. Um, Ray and I met with the city uh, mayor and city council um, the last week in, in August, and it was quite a, 
a lively discussion and debate um, because there was discussion, do we just scale down the size of the, pro the property? Do we use different materials? Um, and then they turned to me and Commissioner Taylor says, Jim, what do you think? And I says, well, this is a lot to take in. I'll come back with a couple of recommendations. And one of them was to have a community conversation. And uh, since that conversation, I've also had private one-on-one -on -one conversations with individual commissioners. And there's serious discussion about just extending that half a cent. Um, you've got it now, it'll, it'll run out in uh, 2031. It goes for 10 years, um, but we may put it back on the ballot in January or February. Yes, sir. What are you projecting this sales tax for the fire department bringing in at the end of that time? Uh, it's about eight and a half million dollars. Well, you're about five million dollars short. Yeah, yeah. It'll bring it, and that's very conservative. Uh, Nita and I are fiscal conservatives. Um, we projected only 2% growth, um, which can change, you know, dramatically, but we're estimating about eight and a half million over the life of that uh, 10 years. So you paid a couple of the architectural deals out of that already, and it's still going to be $600,000? No, that, that's the total contract right now. Yeah, that's the total contract right now. Uh, the turn dedicated sales tax runs through June 30th of 3031. Um, when, when it was proposed, it was during the life of the tax. The proceeds realized from that additional one half cent sales tax shall be used for fire station, street improvements, capital improvements uh, as approved by the city commission. Um, the challenge since I've been here, as I've been discussing with the elected officials, um, the fire station is a top priority, and, and I love them guys. They'll, they'll do about a thousand runs uh, this year, medical calls. Um, we have uh, four ambulances, and we serve the entire county of Kingfisher. Um, um, but the challenge is we've got other needs. We've got, we, we've got some serious, <laughs> we had another water line break uh, today. Uh, if you were up by the um, Chisholm Museum, uh, you probably saw water flowing in the street, but we got it taken care of in a couple of hours. But we've got some other capital needs that need to be addressed. Um, My question is, we passed this three years ago. What's taken so long to get started? And if we go to extend this, how long are we looking to wait? Or are you going to hit the actual six months and get rolled? Yeah. Um, if we extend it, it'll be for another 10 years. So the, the It'll go from, uh, it'll go to 2041. Um, even though you passed it in July, we didn't start collecting sales tax for a couple of months. But I, I shared with you what we've collected thus far. Um, the state is getting out of the sales tax business for groceries. Um, you'll notice on your bill, there's, there's 4.5% off your grocery bill. Um, so that gives us a little bit more uh, flexibility to try to recoup those, uh, those dollars for the city. Um, Oklahoma is the only state in the nation that does not allow municipal governments to have ad valorem property taxes. It's written right in the Constitution. And so we have to operate with sales tax or user fees and uh, those kinds of things to operate our, our general uh, government operations. Yes, sir. I got a question. Hold on real quick. Let me, let me, I want to follow up with okay. Jared's question, if you don't mind. I think it's important. Because um, I think it's, that's, that's a good question. Um, when we started the process, we didn't anticipate coming out of COVID that the costs were going to be increased as much, 40%, 40 so forth and so on. So our projections of what this project was going to cost us was below the 8.5 million that we thought that the taxes were going to, were going to bring in over t over 10 years. We thought we were going to have some left over to to actually do some of the street improvements and stuff like that. When we started getting into the numbers and started getting into things and seeing how things were really going to cost, we thought, oh goodness, this is going to be a lot more expensive than within than what we thought. I'm I'm I go by the book of if you have a budget, you stay within that budget doesn't matter what you want, doesn't matter if you have a budget, you stay within that budget. And our budget was $8.5 million. So whenever we started talking about all this, we were like, crap, this is like a $10 million, $12 million deal. What are we going to do? That kind of put the brakes on things because 
we don't have the other projects and other things that we need to do in the city. We don't have an extra $4 million to pull out of the general fund and just throw it into this project and, and put aside all these other projects that we have that we need to do in the city. And so that's whenever you sit down and you start value engineering the, proce the process and saying, okay, what can we do to cut down the costs and try to get this as close to or within that budget? If it doesn't fit within that budget of what these guys need and what we need to build for the next 50 years, then we've got to go a different route. We've, we've either got to fit the project in the budget, which means the size decreases, the, the, some of the things that are inside the building are not exactly what everybody wants, and it may not be a 50-year building, it may be a 25-year building at that point, or you go back to the citizens who are paying for it anyway, and it's their money, it's you guys' money, and you get their opinion and say, look, we, don't, we are not gonna have enough money within this budget that we originally thought we were gonna have to build the facility that, that these guys need. It's up to you guys to tell us do you want us to stay within that original budget or do you guys want to go ahead and add on to that budget and allow us to build the facility the way that the way that these guys can? do you feel like if we pass the the half to, to continue on to 2041 then we're going to have the means to go that route yes yeah because if we way ahead you talk about the budget here but it's going to grow as the time grows, right? Mm -hmm. right so if, if we can get the extension of the of the tax it's not it won't that basically tells us that we're we're going to have this much money over the course of time and therefore that's going to cover the cost of it we think that we can build this thing for the 13.5 million dollars if you if we extend this out another 10 years and this is just back of the napkin math right we're, we're expecting eight and a half million from this first 10 years if nothing else changes which it will you add another eight and a half million and $17 million throughout the 20 years of that tax. That will allow us to build this facility and it will allow us to start doing some of the things that we wanted to do in the street improvements. Because you gotta remember, if we know that that's guaranteed tax money coming in, we actually can go out and feel comfortable if we have to go out and borrow, uh, borrow to get that money right now, we know that we have that money coming in to make the payments on that loan, right? So it puts us in a position where we can do a lot, a lot more more things does that make sense yeah so i just i want to let you guys know that it's a great question He's about why it's taking this long to get here it, uh, since get we passed this in 2021 mm -hmm. and it's because delay mm -hmm. mainly because the, the everything was much more expensive than we expected and we were doing everything that we could to stay within that budget that you guys gave us for the taxes of the projected revenue from the taxes and we finally came to the conclusion we're not going to be able to give these guys what they need with that budget so we're going to have to do something either the citizens tell us nope that's it you got to stay in that budget or yes we're willing to add on to that tax extend that tax and go ahead and build build this what the way that they, they, they need it so, sorry guys. i'm sorry what'd you say the original cost estimate for the fire station in 2021 we thought originally it was going to cost about 5.6 million yeah they also had a fire station at 10,000 square feet. And when I got here, I sat down with Tony Stewart, who was the current chief then, and I said, what's the current size that you're building now? And he went and measured it and got come back. He said, Jim, it's 7,500 square feet. And I says, Tony, 2,500 square feet, that's not going to add nothing, you know. And so he and I toured the state. We looked at four fire stations over the next few months prior to awarding this contract to uh, BRW, just to get a feel for what's been built in the last 10 years. And we saw some great stations. We saw some things we definitely do not want in Kingfisher. Isn't that right, Tony? And, um, and we brought those ideas back. Um, um, you know, there was times when the, the city commissioners were looking at a 20,000 square foot building. And I did some analysis. I, I said, I looked at the city of Kingfisher, your growth for the last 120 years has been less than 1% per year. So I, I just said, you know, we gotta be reasonable about this. I mean, you definitely do need a station bigger than what you've got, but we've gotta be, because that thing climbs every time you move it up 100, 200 square feet. And so 
um, to Tony's credit, to, to Chief Gibson's credit, uh, and to the firemen. You know, they all came around the table and they said, hey, I think we could work with this at, at 16.5, you know, and then the commissioners bought into that. Um, the challenge was once we awarded it to a, an architect that built 360 stations, he says, Jim, he says, this is, you know, what you're wanting may be even more than what you, you thought. But he gave us a $500 square foot station, and, um, and that's why we're here today. Because here again, I don't think anybody anticipated when they went to the public and said, oh, we're going to have to borrow some money. You know, we're not going to be able to raise all this money to pay the contractor. Because once the contractor builds, I mean, he's going to ask us for progress payments as that thing's being built. So I think there was some short-sightedness when they looked at the whole financial costs. Um, and that's why we listed what it all is. The land, the, the uh, cost of money, um, you know, er, the architect's fees. Uh, we're gonna have to have, a, I call him a clerk of the works, but we're gonna have to have our own inspector to keep an eye on the contractor. The architect's gonna help us out, but, um, and, and Chief Gibson and I will be on site. Uh, you know, what little bit I know of, of construction business, we'll keep an eye on the contractor, but we're still going to need somebody to represent us, you know, as this thing goes on. What have you done about grant money? Have you looked into that? I have. Um, and, and I told this person I wasn't going to point him out, but I'm going to point him out. Uh, when I started seeing this thing happening, I had breakfast with Mike Sanders, one of King Fisher's um, boys that grew up here and, you know, was born and raised. And I said, Mike, I said, I'm thinking about hiring a lobbyist out of Washington, D.C. to represent us, to try to get, you know, some money from uh, Congress, get a direct federal appropriation. And he sat right across from me. We we're having breakfast at the uh, cafe. And he said, Jim, he says, why don't you do it? And he says, I'll help you. I've been to Washington, D.C. And uh, we've got local congressmen. And you have a connection from your ties back in Claremore on the other side of the state. And he says, nobody's going to sell it better than you. So I said, all right, Mike, I'm going to need your help, brother. He says, I'm with you. And so we started in April. Um, I got a hold of Congressman Lucas's office. And I said, I'm not going to tell you a pie in the sky number. I'm going to tell you what I think we really need in Kingfisher. And this is a public safety building. And I told him I needed two and a half million. And uh, so I filled out the paperwork. I, we had to fill out all kinds of stuff. And then he gave me a short window. I had about three days to get letters of support in the community. Well, we got 10 letters of support, various organizations, Chamber of Commerce, the, you know, anybody I could, I could find to write a letter of recommendation. Well, it made the first cut. But as you know, in Washington, things are strange. And they're telling me, Jim, we're not going to know for sure. We can't even get a a continuing education, you know, a continuing resolution to get the budget, you know, the fiscal year begins October 1. And I said, if you could tell me right after Christmas, right after the election, you know, whether we're going to get that two and a half million, I'd be happy. Um, but if we get the two and a half million, it's dedicated to this fire station. That was on the application, and uh, that's what we're pushing for. Um, I've talked with Senator Langford. He's in favor. He's going to support uh, this. Uh, the chairman of the Appropriations Committee is, uh, why can't I think of his name, Mike? Cole. Tom Cole, yeah, good old, good, another Oklahoman. He's the chairman of the Appropriations Committee. Mike was in Washington, D.C. a couple weeks ago. I gave him a note. I said, hand carry this to the boys in Washington. And so between he and I, we've stayed on top of this thing, and Mike's a great asset. Uh, he's worked Washington, D.C. under a previous president, so he understands the politics of uh, Washington, D.C., and uh, I think we have a lot in, in our, going in our favor uh, between the appropriations chairman and Congressman Lucas, his, his staff has been good to, uh, we just keep reiterating how important it is to Kingfisher. So we, we are pursuing that. Jim. Yes, sir. What is the annual budget for the fire department? In other words, cost to operate the fire department wages, all of that, what is? I, it's about 2.2 million. 2.1 million. How much money does the fire department, because I know that ambulance can bring in some money and you guys are running all the time. <laughs> yeah, we are. And that's a good question. Uh, here again, the council, you know, um, Chief Stewart, before he re retired, 
uh, he and I pushed through the first rate increase in our ambulance calls in the last 10 years. And so we're, every time I see that ambulance go, I go ka-ching, ka-ching. Um, we'll get, you know, we were leaving money on the table. You know, when you're doing a thousand runs, we're estimating we'll collect about a half a million dollars in ambulance fees. Every year? Every year. That's good. And then we also get about a million dollars, sometimes a little bit more, from the 522. Is that correct? Do you have a, do you have a floating scale of whether they're in town, like Kingfisher Citizens, versus Tennessee or Loyal? Or no, we don't. We, it's just one flat fee for the ambulance runs. Uh, we don't ask for a credit card when we show up. We just take care of them and, and uh, provide them. You, you get that bill about a month later or a couple of months later and you about die from looking at the bill. Right. I know. I know. I know. And, and we got it. Medicare patients. I mean, when we roll up on the scene, the guys don't say, are you got full insurance? You got Blue Cross Blue Shield? Are you Medicare? I mean, they just provide the service. They're, they're just good guys. But they'll do about 1,000 thousand ambulance calls. You want to add anything to that, Chief? So we don't actually cover Hennessy, like you said earlier. Right. Hennessy has their own ambulance, and Cashin has their own. But we cover the rest of the county. Well, I knew you guys covered a large territory. Right. Yeah. And actually, there's, I believe, on the billing cycle, the citizens of Kingfisher get a cheaper rate than out of town. Okay. okay. All right. For years, we were collecting about three hundred thousand, and we're asked, we're based on what we raised our rates, and we did a comparison with, you know, all the going up to Eden and uh, Edmond and everybody else around. Um, we're still not the highest, but we're not the lowest. We were definitely the lowest before. Um, so we're estimating conservatively, again, another 200000 in uh, new revenue in this current fiscal year. Part of my question, the reason I was asking that is if you're charging everybody the same price, why don't they pay more? You're going to have to go further. Yeah. Yeah, we do, we do not do any more. Is it hospital runs? We don't we don't go into Oklahoma City. We, we do a. We don't do non-emergency transport. Yeah. Yeah. Emergency transfers will still take. And yeah. And once we'll take a non-emergency if we have a man. Yeah. We have six guys on a shift, and uh, so that's eighteen. We have three shifts. That's eighteen, and then the. Fire chief is 19. What do you project your needs going forward, like manpower? Do you expect to have to grow more? We need to have room for that. So he said the city's only grown 1%. We don't go off the numbers of the population. We go off call volume. And I'll, since I've been here 20 years, we have went up two guys. I expect in the next 20 years, they'll go up two more guys. And that's why the station we're doing for uh, eight bedrooms. We only have six guys that need bedrooms right now, but we're trying to plan for the future and already have the bedrooms there instead of building onto the station. Chief, one thing, you, I think your growth might pick up a little bit on ambulance runs for the simple fact that my generation, there's a lot of people that are going into retirement. Mm -hmm. That's part of what's affecting the need of help in the yeah. country because generation is retiring and yeah. there's not as many people there to take the place of it. Yeah. I attended a conference a couple of weeks ago and that was one of the topics. I attended an economic conference and they're saying for every three people retiring, every three people retiring, these baby boomers are retiring in huge numbers, there's only one person to replace those jobs. And America's in better shape than China. China has a one baby policy. But people just are having smaller families, and it's affecting Social Security. I mean, it's a rippling effect throughout the whole economy. But for three people retiring, only one person is, is uh, back in the workforce. Yes, sir. Um, a lot of y'all know I served 38 years in public service. <clears throat> prior, prior to working for the Highway Patrol, I was a, a paramedic. I did that for eight years, so I lived in a station. I know what it's like to live with other people. I can't vote for the sales tax. I don't live in the city. Um, we do have a business here in town, but I think a half a penny, one half of a penny is not a lot to ask to get what our firefighters need and what we're gonna need for 50 years. Yeah. It's 
facts too is you think everybody that drives through this town and stops by right. they're and we helping. Have a lot of people shopping yeah. for the kingfishers that don't live here. Yeah. So they're helping pay for that fire station. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That Dollar Tree, every time I drive by, I see more and more cars there. So <laughs> it's just adding to our sales tax revenue. So we, we want that. Let me see what else I've got up here. Oh, that's estimated revenue sales tax, eight and a half million is based on an estimated 2% growth. I already shared that with you. And questions. So we've been doing questions. <laughs> anybody else? Anybody else have any hot burning question? Inflation is about, well, think about three quarter percent. It's one of those things where you could go and you could, you could raise the percent, right? Or, the you next could extend, or you could extend the time. No, for right? the next, so you could, you for the next think about add on. For the you next 10 years, you might quarter percent. Percent. You would maybe have to extend it out to 2041. You could maybe do it out to 2035 or something like that. But it's all about what, what, what's the money you need and will that. Will that give give you the money that you need? But um, I mean, again, you, you got to remember that this tax is not just for the fire station. That was the right. priority, as to ask the citizens for this this tax was to build the fire station. But the original thought was we would build the fire station, but also have a couple of million dollars left over so that we could use for street improvements and other capital expenses. Right now, every single penny is going to the fire station. That, that, you know, and that and we're fine with that. As a commission, I think we're, we're fine with that. Um, and and if, if, you know, if the citizens are telling us you guys want to extend the, the ad alert, the, not the ad alert, but the sales tax enough to give us the budget to make, to, to build this fire station that we think that they need, we're, we're all for it. We just, we're not gonna spend money that we don't have. So basically what you're asking us to do is just extend it. Yes. Yeah, it's a yeah. I'll piggyback on that. The reason we're here tonight is because when we pass that, I'm a little bit more fiscally conservative, conservative than Jim. <laughs> if you look at this, as we've gathered it today, uh, we're going to collect about $7.8 million. The original intent uh, to what Kyle was alluding to is that we were going to build a fire station, a 10,000 square foot fire station for $5 million. Obviously, that has changed. We as a commission uh, evolved to the point that said, all right, the voters voted on the fire station. We're going to build a fire station. And so we're going to increase that to whatever we're, we're uh, collecting and project for that best we can. Um, and so the reason we're here, you've approved that, but we can't build what they need given the monies that we're going to collect. And so the best course of action for us, firefighters and what they provide to this community, it's an absolute necessity that we provide them what, what we can provide them, given the constraints that we have. But the constraints are currently physical, right? And so, um, like I said, we evolved to that point where we would forget, forget the infrastructure and the capital improvements, let's contribute everything we collect to the fire station. But we're at a point now you know, no matter what, we're going to have to borrow money because right now, as you said, as you saw, we have two point two million dollars in the bank, and we still have till twenty thirty one to collect it. That borrowing of money is going to cost us two and a half million, uh, period. And mm -hmm. so that that's another thing that we have to consider. I mean, you're building a uh, eight million dollar, nine million dollar fire station, whatever it is, and you're borrowing seven million over the course of that time to pay that back. You're paying another two and a half million dollars uh, that doesn't go into the, the structure itself. And, and that's ultimately uh, what we have to decide and how we want to carry it forward. They needed it yesterday, 10 years ago. There's no question. It was built in 1974, the current one. And so, 75, is that right? 75. Uh, anyway, they, they needed it a long time ago and, and they do a tremendous service here. I do want to thank them for the chili. I didn't get a chance, but it looked like uh, there's not much left there, so I uh, appreciate them doing that. But it is needed, and, and, and you voted on it, and we're going to deliver that. We're j we just want to know that, hey, are you interested in it to provide the money for us to get it built quicker than what we could have? Yes, sir. You brought up some really good points about what we need. 
And I agree. Right now, what is the fire protection class in the city of Cambridge? Class three. Class three. Three? Yeah. Okay. So, the one thing on fire protection size, the fire station, the firefighters is water. If you guys, you need to think about this, is that you have got to provide water to keep our fire protection mm -hmm. class the way it is in order to prove that we've got a lot more to do in order to lower that fire protection class. Right. So you got to think about the dollars you're going to invest and then the amount that's going to return to the community through savings on insurance. The insurance is going to get nothing but higher, and we all know that. We're experiencing that. So I'm asking you to think about, about maybe being physically conservative with the fire station now so that we can make sure that we have the money that we're going to need to maintain our water systems and for the future. It's just as important as the fire station. So I'll, I'll, I'll comment on that if anybody else wants to as well. Um, obviously, if three weeks ago we had a significant issue that uh, we really didn't think we would get the water back up. Um, we're in the process right now of uh, request for qualifications for engineers to do a water study, among other things. Mm -hmm. And that was part of this program or, or this vote that you approved in 2021 to invest, in addition to the fire station, invest in, into our infrastructure mm -hmm. as well as street improvements. As you've heard tonight, given where we are today, in order to build this fire station, we cannot invest in that. So one of the reasons that we had our last public meeting was to address those concerns in regards to our water. So you saw we had the very lowest rates around here right. in regards to water rates. Right. So we just increased those in July, some, to, to put us, we're not at the lowest, we're, we're, not we're the not highest mid-range as far as other communities around here currently. But one of the comments that I saw made in regards to that, hey, is that the commission and the administration of the city knew this was coming, that's why they increased the rates. We hadn't started collecting anything. We've collected two months, but we're going to invest in our water infrastructure. There's no question. There's two things that are important beyond the, the fire, the firefighter and fire station and our emergency services, water and power. And I think you've seen the investment that we've made in power. There's some things that are coming up in regards to our um, uh, power supply that we have that it's old too. We've got a lot of things that we need to address, but water and power are, are as important as anything we've got here. So uh, to your point, you're exactly right. I can tell you that we have, we've just approved in the last few months, three months, uh, uh, bringing in some uh, fire hydrants, replacing fire hydrants. Mm -hmm. We've got valves across the city that we can't exercise or shut off. We need to invest in that. We've got lines in the ground. We don't really know where they're at or uh, what kind of materials. So there's a lot of things that we need to address. And that's part of the problem that we've had as a commission is where, where do you start taking those bite-sized pieces to address the needs that we have? Because so, for so long, we have deferred maintenance across the city. And, and I can get into a lot more details. Won't do that because we'll be here till midnight. And I don't think you want to be here but that long. But uh, we do have a lot of need, needs and we're going to address those as best we can given the constraints we have physically. You've yeah. done studies or you're in the process of having somebody do studies? So we're in the process of selecting an engineer that's qualified to do that. Uh, you know, we, we have an engineer on staff right now, and, and unfortunately, uh, we, we've worked with one engineer for quite some time, uh, and, and they may get a portion of what we're doing now, but an engineering firm cannot be all things to all people. We have a lot of things that we do in the city of Kingfisher. We have power, we have sanitary sewer, we have water, we have streets. I mean, we can go on and on and on with the things that we have to address, drainage. Not all engineering firms can provide every service that we need. So we're in the process of reviewing some, some proposals that they've provided to select some engineers that will allow us to take care of the needs that you're doing. <coughs> You know, and I guess I wish I could tell you, I've been in this business over 31 years, I wish I could tell you that Kingfisher is unique. You're not. Every city I've been in, they don't want to spend money until it's absolutely broken. There's deferred maintenance in all the communities I've been in. 
And I'm glad to hear the mayor's evolving. <laughs> uh, I'm a moderate, you know, conservative. He, he is definitely a very conservative moderate, <laughs> but he's evolving. Um, I have thoroughly enjoyed working with these elected officials. Um, they are forward thinking. Um, they have supported, you know, ideas that I brought forward. Uh, we try to think through them. When an item's on the agenda, the council knows that it's been vetted by me and that I stand behind that recommendation. And as a city manager, I don't mind taking risks. I just want to be able to look behind me and say there's five elected officials that believe in me and you know we're going in the right direction. So um, that's, that's our plan going forward. Um, this has been a community conversation um, and that's what we're just trying to do is get a feel from you. Uh, I sent out 2,600 letters and I appreciate those of you that have, have showed up. So anybody got any other questions? Any ideas? Yes, sir. On keeping Brian. up your uh, products that you put inside this fair, in, inside your fire station. Yeah. I was involved in rebuilding this this fairgrounds from the get go. This building was built in '93. It uses commercial product in it. We've had very few problems with it. Very little replacement. About the biggest factor we've ever done was put paint on the walls, and we replaced the floor one time since 93. Now, I don't know how many years that adds up, but your commercial products are going to pay for themselves in the yeah. long run whenever you build this. And sometimes you got to go ahead and invest in the future and, you know, have Bite. a 50 year yeah. product. Bite no flat ball. ceilings, put a slope on them, right. whatever <laughs> you do. Ray, this, this, yeah. this building has a standing seam roof on it. We've never had a problem with it. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you know, and we put the commercial products in throughout the, the these fairgrounds whenever we yeah. built them and stuff. We want to we want to build something that'll stand the test of time. And, yes, uh, you need to. Yeah, yeah. So we're trying to think strategically. <laughs> Chief, you want to add anything to what I've said, other than an amen? <laughs> So do y'all want to relook at the drawings and actually have me explain to you what we're putting in the building? Because we're not asking for a lot. Anybody want to look at it? Please. Okay. And while Ashton pulls it up, we have plenty of chili. <laughs> Go get another bowl. <laughs> yeah, some of you young kids. Go get some more chili. Firemen don't want to eat that all night. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> and also, Jim said we have 19 firefighters. We actually have 20. We have one volunteer, Colby Kramer. Oh, all right. And all I'm right. And then we can always call on Chief Stewart to come out of retirement to haul a hose or run the ambulance or. <laughs> so, the, the committee that put this together is retired fire chief Tony Stewart, city manager Jim, Brittany, and myself with BRW. Okay, so right here you see the entrance, which is on the north side of the building, near Strother Street. So you'll enter into the lobby. Yeah, they tried to do in perpetuity, and the vote, they voted it down. Because we have to train so much, and we have 20 guys on, and for me to send 20 guys to OSU to train, it would take me three years. Whereas if I have my own training room, OSU will come to me, train them in one day. How much that saves a lot of money. Yes. Yeah, because yeah, I don't have to pay as much overtime, lodging, travel. So then you walk out of the lobby, there's a public bathroom. 
go actually enter into the station. So if the city or anyone else wants to use this training station, training room, it's open to the public and it will not bother the firemen. Because this door will be locked at most of the time. You got the fire chief's office, and if you turn and go south, it's just the electrical storage room, conference room for when I have my officers' meetings, which I have three lieutenants and three captains of myself, and we have meetings once a month. Then we also have meetings at the chamber, as far as uh, department head meetings. We could use this room if we needed to, mm -hmm. if the chamber's booked up. So if you keep going south, it's the report office. And those are computers where my guys can do their fire reports or EMS reports. As well as have a window to see out in the bay and outside on the front apron. You'll see stairs. I know I, a lot of people ask, do we have a pole? This circle here is a pole. And it enters from this side into the bay. So we have to have an elevator according to ADA. We got the battery storage, two decon bathrooms. So during COVID, my guys had to strip down to their underwear in the bay and go walk through the station to the showers to shower after every call. Whereas with these, I don't have to introduce that stuff into my station to my clean zone, my cool. cold zone. So that'd be a warm zone. Gear storage, and someone asked about grants. I think he's gone. I've already got grants for those gear storage lockers. So those are paid for. And then this is just more storage stuff. EMS storage, as you know, we run a bunch of EMS calls, and we have to keep supplies for EMS calls. SCBA, that'd be a compressor room where we fill our own SCBAs, the pack we wear on our back to go on structure fires. And then it also have tools to fix SCBAs. And then a shop's just, as, it's a tool room. Backing up. We've got a lieutenant's office and a captain's office, and then an exercise room, which we don't have right now. Actually, my guys put one together at the county barn with their own money, but it'd be nice for them to be at our station exercising because we have to be healthy and fit, unless you're a chief. <laughs> <laughs> The fire riser room you see there, that is the fire sprinkler stuff. The apparatus bay, we built it to fit three vehicles in a row in each bay. So it's long enough, and I believe, do you remember the footage between the... Is it 100 fire? foot? It's 100 foot length. By 80? Is it 80 by 100? Uh, yeah. 76 by 100? Okay, let's go upstairs. So that's 7,600 square feet. Yeah, 7, that's the, the same. The is the size of our station. Now. That's correct. That's correct. Every one of my trucks and trailers will fit in that bay right now. And then here again, we also built it that if the town grows and we need an extra bay, we can add it on the end. Okay. What'd you have? The conference room also doubles as a safe room. Yes, the conference room, since we're in Tornado Alley, we have to have a safe room. So the conference room is a safe room. And for the city of Kingfisher, our fire station is the emergency operations center. Okay. All right, we're upstairs. So you come up the stairs. There's a pole right there inside the stairs in, in the living quarters. Uh, just a utility room, bathroom, 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 bathroom. So there's four bathrooms. So we basically doubled our bathrooms just upstairs. You'll notice all these are dorms. There's eight dorms there, which when you think of a dorm, it's not, it's a bed and a nightstand is all that's in that room. There's no desks. And a foot locker, you got a foot locker oh, for the lockers are on the outside. Oh yeah, okay. The lockers are right here for our guys and their uniforms. 
So, and you ask why we're doing eight? Well, I, we plan on eventually having more people because we're going to have more calls. No one's getting younger. So, but for now, the two extra rooms would not be furnished. They'd just be storage rooms until needed. You have an IT room, mechanical, which is HVAC and all that stuff. A day room, with, it would have six recliners right now, but it's showing eight. A dining room and a kitchen and three pantries. Each one of those pantries will have an icebox and cabinetry in them for our guys to store their food. If you go up to the fire station right now, you can't fit anything in our icebox because the guys bring their food to work and that's what they eat. And then they leave it there. Until Somebody else eats it. <laughs> <laughs> or someone else eats it. That's right. Every Friday, it's mandatory to clean it all yeah. up. Yeah. Every Friday, we empty the state, empty the refrigerator, unless you call and tell us to save it. So going outside, this is still on the upper deck. There's a patio, which will have a grill there, and a place we can cook outside and sit outside. This is on the east side and stairs down because we have to have two sets of stairs. So to save money, we put the stairs on the exterior one set because it's cheaper and it don't eat up square footage of the building. Any questions on any of that that I went over? You got anything to add? Great. A generator for mm -hmm. the building. Okay. It looks like a completion design. There's not much for <laughs> No, there's not, not much for No. So what? One more thing. What Jim was talking about, go to the uh, layout of the land. Go to where? The layout of the property. Yeah, right there. So initially when we started, we wanted five bays. Well, uh, budget cuts. We, so we cut one old bay off, but we left enough room, if we ever could build it, we'd be allowed to. And here's Chief Stewart, former. <laughs> Just uh, I'd like to uh, piggyback off the gentleman that's on the end of the table that he may be gone. Is he still here? He was hard of hearing. He was talking about ISO. ISO rating for insurance. Oh yeah. When I first came on 40 years ago, we were at nine. And then uh, when we finally got to getting involved with ISO, there's there's a, actually a plan that you have to follow. And uh, if you can follow that and, and, and complete as many as the, much of that as you can, then you will lower your rating. So we went from a nine to a seven. <coughs> Don't, I couldn't tell you what year it was, but uh, about about 15 years ago, we went from a seven to a five under uh, Chief Poindexter. And then during my tenure, we went from a five to a three. And uh, we're, we're, and they show you what your score is, and we were this close to a two. So with this new station, and when they get the uh, training in the back, so the training is a vital part of the ISO rating. And so when we drop from a three to a two, for those of you that are not talking to your insurance agents, let them know that, you're, that we're a three, whether you're in city limits or outside city limits, that affects your premiums. And I try and tell that at as much public meetings as I can because I don't know who's getting advantage. Business and residential, it applies to everyone. So when these guys get this all done, and they asked to get another uh, inspection or another uh, ISO uh, test rating, which you'll get at the end of the test, I would almost bet you we're going to fall to a two, which is dang good for our town. And that's we've worked hard through the years. When I was a firefighter up until my uh, uh, retirement, we've worked hard on those uh, details to get as much of that as accomplished as, as possible. Now, 25% of that is water, 25% is communications, and the rest of it is us, which is our equipment, our training, our manpower, uh, and, and part of that communication falls on us too, as well as the dispatch. 
So 75% of that, we work hard to keep that at where we are or better to eventually get to a lower rating so that you guys can benefit off of what we do. And that's what we're here for, is to help you in all directions that we possibly can. Well, I know personally, you know, on taxes and stuff, I don't mind paying that tax if I can see, feel like I'm getting what my dollar is going for. You know, getting my dollar's worth out of it. Can I say something here in regards to that? So just to clarify, I mean, we're gonna go back out to the vote of the people because that's what we're required to do to extend that. So be aware of that. And I don't know exactly when we can do that, but it'll be after the first of the year. Um, so just if you would spread that word that we are gonna go back out to the vote to be able to extend that and we would appreciate uh, your consideration regarding this, given the situation we're in. Yeah. And if we can't, if we don't get that passed, then if the citizens tell us that they don't want to extend that for another 10 years, then that will tell us the budget that we have for to build this building, which will be that 8.5 million. It doesn't matter if we want a 16,000 square foot building. If we can't afford it, we don't build it. Uh, that's the way I look at it. So, I mean, it's either to get what we, to build the building that we think and we know that these guys need and want for the next 50 years, we need you guys to support to go out and educate those that didn't have a chance to come here and understand why we're doing it because everybody else looks like, hey, why didn't, you know, just build it. We've already voted, just build it. Well, it's a little bit more complicated than that and that's what we've explained to you guys tonight. So if we don't get that passed, then we have an $8.5 million budget, and to build these guys a building, then it's gonna look very different than what we have now. Well, the thing it is, is I'm gonna go back on what Tommy said about the ISO ratings. That saves us money. Yeah. And if we don't get a good fire station, they're not gonna give it to us, and it, our, rate, our insurance is gonna go up instead of go down. Right. And there wouldn't be any left over for that's right. Yeah. Yeah. You're not building this building just for the firemen. You're building this building for the city of Kingfisher and for every one of you that needs these services. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah as, as we said earlier, we were the only full service fire department in the entire county, and so we help some of the volunteer fire departments. There's a grass fire outside the city limits. We're rolling. The ambulance rolls throughout the Kingfisher County. So you're right, ma'am. One last thing, Jim. On yep. this list that was up here, the best scheme and the better scheme, which kind of delineates anywhere from uh, commercial to uh, yeah. residential to commercial, the top one, the exhaust loopers. When we first started this, my concern to the council was that let's protect the firefighters from all this uh, cancer-causing carcinogens that we deal with every day. And that was my number one thing. And if we go with the base scheme, then we're not going to get that. So we're going to be exposed to things that needlessly be, to be exposed. And the other one is no generator. If electric goes out at an emergency station, now you have no way to operate your building. That's common sense. You lose communication. Absolutely. You lose everything. And just to drop down, because I don't want to get into a lot of this, no alerting system. When we get a call, we get alerted at the station, tone goes off, and everybody knows what's going in. So if we don't get that, they're going to call us on the phone and say, hey, and if we're not at the station because we're on another call, how's that work? The alerting system now, since we're 911, they have radios wherever they go, and they get alerted through that. But if, they're, if we don't have that, they're going to have to find somebody that's got a cell phone and call us if we're out on a call. Hey, we've got a fire downtown or whatever. So there's so many things on there. If we stick with the base scheme, the department's gonna need some major work done shortly thereafter. And why would you say, well, we're gonna give you some more money another five years down the road when you just gave us money to build this? So I think, it sounds like to me, you guys are on the same, link, same wavelength as the rest of us at looking at the better scheme. I hope you are. Yeah.
On behalf of uh, Mayor Cobalt, the commissioners and the administration, I want to say thank you to all of you. And by the power vested in me, I've now made you all ambassadors. <laughs> Go out into the community, talk in your churches, talk in your neighborhoods. Tell them what you've seen. Tell them to come up to City Hall. We'll, we'll have these drawings at City Hall or at the fire station if people want to talk with the chief. Um, we're trying to plan for the future. And I really appreciate you guys coming. You've been here for an hour and a half. Um, thanks for coming out. Appreciate you.